version of Despicable Me. Those auditions are down the hall. Thank you. Okay, next up, number 24, please. Number 24. Howdy. I'm number 24. Come on over. Just like this? That's a little close, but you can back up with a lot. Yes, sir. Your name? They call me Mr. Obedient. And your superpower? I do what I am told when I'm told to do it. That's your superpower. I know it's not really a power, but it's something I do. I'll give you that. I wish my kids obeyed the moment they were told to do something. So, when you're told to do something, you do it right away. Indeed. Sit. Stand. Do the Macarena. Speak. My grandmother makes the best sweet tea in West Western Westbrook. Would you care for some? No, thank you. Hmm. I would like you to go 
Lasso of cat. Here you are, Martin. One bona fide cat. Okay, to really put you to the test, do the chicken dance for the rest of the interview until I tell you to leave. Well, gosh, I didn't know chickens could dance, but I'll try my best. Ha ha ha. Wow. I am impressed. Oh, thank you. How did you come upon this power? Well, I have faith in my leader. I didn't even question him. I trust his leadership and I do what he says. I see. Who's your leader? Well, in my everyday life, God is. I know God has a plan for me and I know he won't lead me astray. When God says go, I go. No questions asked. I'm sure God is very pleased with that too. And I know whoever leads our superhero team will appreciate it as well. Oh, thank you, sir. Now get out of here. I have other issues to do. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Wow. There goes a guy with a lot of faith. Have you ever realized what a big leap of faith it is to play pin the tail on the donkey? I bet you never realized that playing this game requires all of us to take a big leap of faith. How do you play pin the tail on the donkey? Well, first, you let someone blindfold you. That's when you take something and cover your eyes, just like this picture. Then they hand you a tail with a piece of tape on it. Finally, they spin you around to make you dizzy and they point you in the direction of the donkey. At least you hope they point you in the direction of the donkey. That's the leap of faith. When they stop spinning you, you are trusting that that person who spun you is not going to make you walk off a cliff. You must have faith that the donkey is in front of you and play the game without question. Obeying God is often a leap of faith. We must trust that God's word is the best way to go, even when no one else is following God's word. If we obey God when he tells us to act, we will be rewarded. He will never lead us astray and he will never let us down. Have faith that God's way is the right way. Have the courage to obey him. And don't delay. God will do great things through you. After church today, you can ask your mom or dad to play pin the tail on the donkey so that you can have a turn. It doesn't have to be pin the tail on the donkey. It could be pin the nose on a clown, pin a bee on the flower. You can make up your own game. But see if you can find something to blindfold yourself and see if you can trust and obey your parents just like in this game. Who can tell me who the leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy is? Star-Lord. Star okay. How about the X-Men? Um, Professor Xavier. Okay. Stone, who's the leader of the Avengers? Captain America. Okay, good answer. So many superheroes to choose from, right? And who's the leader of the Justice League, Eli? Superman. Superman, okay. <laughs> Does anybody find it odd that there's all these teams of superheroes? And, uh, you know, they, they are all have to, one hero to, they, that they have to choose to be their hero. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird. There's no question that Captain America, Iron Man, Hulk, and Thor, like they all fight crime all on their own, right? So... Why do Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, why do they listen to Captain America when he starts giving orders during a battle? Well, I mean, I don't know. You don't know? Do you? No. No? Okay. Well, the reason why is because 
they're good team players. You know, because they know that they'll do better working as one team with one leader than instead of four individuals. They know that Cap is experienced because he was in World War II. Like, he fought the Nazis. Like, he's led men into battle. He knows what to do. So he starts calling out orders. And so he's got the wisdom to lead. They follow him. No questions asked. So uh, every superhero team depends on the team members following a strong leader. When teams get divided, like they did in Captain America Civil War, because, you know, these people were in space, these people on this side of the earth, those people on that side of the earth, they all got divided. <clears throat> Um, and they aren't as strong as they can be. The X-Men, they put their trust in Professor Xavier, the Guardians of the Galaxy, trust in Star-Lord. As Christians, we trust in someone even more powerful and more wise than Superman. We trust in God. So, today's Bible hero that we're going to read about, his name is Mr. Obedience. So, Mr. Obedient, he is a great man of faith who never hesitated to follow God's commands. His name was Abram. But you guys might know him by a different name. Maybe Abraham. 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 All right. So, here's how the story began. And we're going to read Genesis 12, 1 through 4. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country and your people. Leave your father's family. Go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you. I will put a curse on anyone who calls down a curse on you. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. So Abram left. Just as the Lord had told him, Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran. All right. So now we've got this guy. Superhero name, a.k.a. Mr. Obedient. You think that's a good name for a superhero? No. Just don't think so. It's funny. It's funny? Okay. So if you made Mr. He Mr. Obedient's story into an origin story comic book, wouldn't be very long. There's not a whole lot of story there. He pretty much, uh, frame one, we meet Abram, a man from the city of Ur, frame two, God says, go to the land I show you. Frame three, he does it. End of story. <laughs> so he pretty much just followed God, no questions asked. You won't find many heroes in the Bible or in real life that have that short of an origin story, right? You ever heard of Gideon? So Gideon, he was hiding from these raiders. And God told him, like, you know, hey, you're going to go fight. You're going to go lead Israel. He's like, no way, I'm afraid. So then he laid out a police, tested God. And then even though God came through in the test, guess what he did? Hey, uh, can we do the test exactly the opposite and do it again? And God did that. And so then he went. But then there was, like, all these little steps along the way to finally where the victory is, where we know Gideon as a superhero. And then Jonah, you guys know Jonah, right? He got swallowed by a whale. Okay, he got swallowed up, right? So God told him, hey, go! And if it was Mr. Obedient, he'd have just gone. But what did he do? Okay. He went the other way. And then, you guys already said it, storms happened, he got thrown overboard, big fish, swallows him up, how long did he spend in there? Do you remember? Like 30 days. Three days. Three days. There you go. Three days he spent in that belly. And then what did the fish say? Bleh. What did he do, Stone? Mm, spit him out. Bleh! Spit him out. And so, therefore, you know, that's how his story went, right? But Abram was a, had, was a man of great faith. He trusted God without question. Mm -hmm. He left his home and his family behind for God. He never hesitated to obey God, even when God tested him by asking him to sacrifice his own son, Isaac. Abram shows us that we can have the faith and the courage to not only obey God, but to do what he asks. So, does obedience come naturally, Stone? Do you want to just obey all the time? You do? Dude, high five. 
That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Does it work out that way though all the time? No, it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Okay, okay. So it doesn't come naturally. We're what the Bible calls sinners at heart. Ooh, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I guess it'd be the people that are rebellious. If you if God asks you to do something, you do something different, that's a sin. And that's a rebellious heart. So think about this past week at home. No, no. <laughs> How many times did your mom or dad have to repeat themselves for you to do what was asked? Um, I can't count. You can't count? Nope. That high or you can't count? I just can't count. Oh, okay. I don't know how many. You don't know how many. Man. No, not a lot. A lot. So how many times, you know, and so eventually though, did you listen? Mm, yeah. Yeah? So it's kind of like an origin story, right? So we don't like being told what to do, right? No, no. <laughs> I don't either. We don't like being bossed around. Yeah, I mean, that's even different, right? Being told what to do, it's like, hey, Stone, can you please go put up your laundry? That's just being asked something to do, right? Yeah. Stone! Hey, man! Go put your clothes away. We don't like that either. I have to. <laughs> we have to learn how to listen the first time. Because if we don't, there's consequences. So, if we're playing football, all right? <laughs> and he left. I tell you, hey, go play defense. Okay. But then every time you guys, you go out on the field, you try and take the ball and be the quarterback. How long do you think you get to stay being on the field as a football player? Um, two minutes. Yeah, maybe less, maybe longer. But you're not staying on the field, right? There's a consequence. What happens if you went and played defense? I would have stayed on the field. That's right. We would have stayed on the field. You know, God has a plan for us. We learned last week from Noah, a.k.a. Arkman, that having faith means trusting God's plan. If we really trust God's plan, then, we'll, then we will obey him. Uh, we will answer when he calls. We'll go anywhere he leads. We won't worry about what people think. Uh, we, we listen. We respond. We obey. So, Stone, what is God calling you to do this week? Obey my parents. Obey your parents. Okay, that's a pretty solid answer. Do you, uh, Eli, do you think that maybe uh, with some of this obedience, do you think uh, just based on what we've been asking you to do that you need to do a little bit of service, do a little bit of work? No. No? <laughs> I think we all know the answer to that, right? Yes. Do you need to be more obedient to mom and dad? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that you need to be a good friend to your brother and help him to be included to have fun? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. What about, this one's probably good and applicable to you too. Do you think maybe you can, if Stone needs help with schoolwork, that you should maybe help him out and be nice about that? No, why not? Because he needs to learn how to do it by himself. I know, but if you showed him the ropes, then wouldn't that be very helpful and then he'd be successful? Yes. Awesome. So whatever God says to do, do it. Don't test him. Don't question. Follow the lead of Mr. Obedient. Pick up your things and go. God has a plan. He wants us to have faith and obey. When God says to go, get up and go. Do it the first time and expect God to do great things. Now we're going to end with a prayer. Is there anybody that'd like to pray? Sure. Okay, Eli, why don't you close us out in a prayer? God. Please teach us how to obey the first time like Mr. Obedient did, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks for joining us this week. Bye! Woo!